So this fall it's been warmer than usual and the fish are, we're moving into the fall. You can see behind me we've got some leaves changing, but it's been warm and the water temperatures are warm, even up north here where we are. The water temperatures have been in the 60s. It's gotten into the 40s and it's gotten into the 50s and I think it's even dipped into the 30s a few nights, but then the days have been in the 70s and 80s and uh, we've had a lot of mild weather. So here we are sitting at the beginning of October and we've had a bunch of mild weather. And so while the bait fish thing is in full swing, make no mistake, the bass are feeding on bait fish, but things have, are not really that, you know, cool water explosive time when you can just, you know, it's a melee. You've really got to kind of still work for them. And, and we had to do that in our championship. Top water worked a bit, but then the top water bite died and we had some high pressure and some east winds and some flat conditions and things got weird. Um, so we had to move out to the weed line or to the break in areas where there were plenty of bait fish, but then we had to use a jerk bait. And, and I want to give you a tip today when the water temperatures are where they're at, I'll give you some, some how to fish it tips, but also which baits might be better. Uh, and we'll start with how to fish it. So when we were fishing, you know, the standard jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause um, was not working. Uh, what, what I did notice, and thanks to forward-facing sonar, I noticed this, but there's ways you, you can experiment when you're fishing to not have to use forward-facing sonar. If you don't have it, you could just experiment. But knowing this is key, when the water temperatures are a little bit higher, like, like they are now in the fall, um, it's best to keep that thing moving. And we had to keep that jerk bait going and if you jerk jerk pause you'd get the fish's attention on the jerk jerk and then when you paused you lost their attention and they swam away so you had to have that thing jerk 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 it had to be moving and uh, so very almost no pauses if you paused it you lost the interest of the fish and that was what was so nice about the forward facing sonar is we dialed in on that immediately saw that happen we tried the standard retrieve where we thought maybe oh jerk jerk here they come freeze it in front of them maybe they'll grab it maybe they'll get it on the next jerk no the second that thing froze those fish swam off they were looking to be triggered they were looking for that reaction bite and that's what they were taking advantage of so the second we dialed in on that and saw fish or saw cover, uh, we brought that jerk bait very quickly by that cover. And, and the faster we moved it away from them, the more viciously they attacked it. And we were able to get some key fish in the boat for our tournament and you know finish in the top part of the field, just really a fish away from a win. So what were we using? I've got some baits that I think are good for the different times of the season, whether it's cold and then whether it's warm, which baits I think I prefer. Uh, so we'll start there. Um, one thing, let's, so let's go to the cold spectrum. I think that the Vision 110 crankbaits, because of their thin profile in the back, I think these in their balance, I think these really stand out in the winter time or in the cold weather times of the year when you need long pauses, when you need it to suspend in front of their faces and then move away from them. There are times when that is the best absolute presentation. And that's probably a, you know, a, the lion's share of the season. The Vision 110 is gonna be great. Another great one in cold weather is the uh, suspending action and the difference in rattle sound of the storms or the rattle and rogue. Um, that's an old school uh, jerk bait that's still highly effective. Uh, I like this one in colder water. So Vision 110 and uh, Vision 110 and a Rogue when the water's colder. So on the warm end of the spectrum, I've got a couple of them that I like. One, I like the Berkeley Stunna. I've got it here in a perch color. And then I've got the Sixth Sense Provoke also in a perch color. And these have a little bit more action, a little more snap action. You can really get these things to dance back and forth. They're very erratic. Um, this Provoke was a great bait for us here in this, in this championship tournament because it does have a very darting action. And when we kept that darting action moving, we got a lot of bites. And you'll kind of notice the body profile differences between the cold weather one and the warm weather one. I noticed that the warm weather ones have a little bit, you know, the ones that move a little more and are more erratic have a little taller back. This one's a little deeper in terms of width this way. 
Um, and likewise, the stunna is similarly shaped. So these baits, you could get a lot of erratic action on, and when we, we got bit when we moved these things quickly, and if we suspended them, it was game over. And the one in the middle that I think you can use both times that can be effective is the Rapala Maverick. That one's got a unique little keel developed on the bottom of the tail here that you won't see on other jerk baits. And this thing you can get to dance back and forth to. Um, you can also get this one uh, to, you know, this is an effective one in cold water also. And the setup we used to help us be effective in the championship tournament fishing those jerk baits was a jerk bait specific rod. The six scale Heimdall rod is a six nine medium power rod that's got a shorter handle section. It's very well balanced and light. And we used the six skill um, eight to one gear ratio hammer on there. I like a high gear ratio when I'm snap, especially when I'm fishing quick like this. I want to be able to snap this thing fast and continue its movement. So I'm taking up line as I'm snapping the rod. And it's a light setup so that I can impart all that action on it and continuously. So you've got to have a you know, a good balance set up for it. You can use a medium action uh, bait casting rod will work too, but this technique specific one is really geared towards having the right stiffness in the tip to be able to move that bait around and then have the give in that first third of the rod to help you land a fish on a treble hooked bait. So very effective there. We used 15 pound braided line for a line management uh, considerations. And then we used an eight and a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, that's just for abrasion resistance and, and, a, and a little bit of give to help the rod out uh, because we're using braided line for line management. And made a lot of casts. Uh, we, again, we're using some forward-facing sonar, but if you don't have it and you get to be this time of the year in the fall, find the bait fish and they're really easy to find because up, in, up north here anyways, the loons are out there on the ends of these uh, points and these breaks and they're feeding on bait fish, find them, work yourself down that break and uh, get off the break in say 8 to 12 feet of water and cast your jerk bait parallel to it and then experiment with the cadence if you can't see the fish. But uh, this time of year when the water's in the 60s yet, uh, before it really takes a nose dive, uh, you've got to be moving that thing pretty quickly. So had a lot of success doing it. Uh, experiment with your cadence and be faster when the water's warmer and they'll load up and stop your rod on you and, and there's nothing more fun than having that movement going and you're fishing along and having that thing just lock up with a nice fish and we caught some beauties on it and so uh, I think if you do this you'll catch some too. So hope these tips were helpful. Please like and subscribe and we'll talk to you next time on the water.